some of the symptoms I was having kept telling me it was retina, you know, because it's all in the central vision. So I finally went back down and I kept telling Iowa, I was like, I want to see a retinal specialist, you know, because I don't think it's an optic nerve because, you know, the optic nerve is sending a signal to the brain, but it's not, it's not getting a complete signal. And that's what the optic nerve guy was like, you know, he said, your optic nerve's fine. And so when I went to see the retinal specialist, um, God, it was about a year of going there, and then they, he finally figured that I have cone dystrophy, and because um, he did a EKG in the eye or whatever, where they put in that dark room and they just flash lights, right. crazy, and then that's when he said, "Well, uh, you have cone rod dystrophy." So I'm like, "All right, well, how do I beat it?" And he said, "You don't." And then, so he said, I, uh, "The cells in that layer are dying off. We don't know why." And uh, then I have some kind of retinopathy and a bunch of other words that are probably that wrong, I guess. But I remember one day being in the with the doctor showing, and my mom was like, uh, "Well, how where where is it? What's going on with Travis?" You know, and he said, "Well, we've we have a hundred similar cases that have been documented or lectured about." You know, my mom was like, "Well, is that rare?" <laughs> and I was like, "Candace, there's like nine billion people in the world. It's probably pretty rare." tried to paint again but I still found myself trying to do what I used to do and I'd get just frustrated because I know my talent level was there and the ability was there but my vision just wasn't allowing me to do the fine detail stuff so I finally got one point I said man I, I have to have paint on me again you know because I, I mean I'm usually covered in paint paint over my hands and everything and that's just how I've been you know for a little you know probably since 90s and uh I missed it, you know, I missed the smell, I missed creating, I missed moving people, I missed all of it. So I just went in and just started throwing paint at a canvas and just said, I'm just gonna see what happens and let my mind wander. Because, you know, I spent so much time with bikes and paint nose because they made me money that I didn't spend as much time as I really wanted to, to create some visions I had in my head uh, on canvas and stuff. You know, I did uh, canvases now and then, but you know, it, it, I could spend, you know, 40 hours on a canvas and you're lucky if you make $200 and I could spend four hours to 14 hours on a bike and make three to 5,000, you know, it's like, so, you know, the obvious choice of what I was focusing on for me was bikes, you know. You know all the years of doing body work on bikes and pulling dents out and doing this, you know, I've developed that feel and uh, stuff. So I just use my hands a lot now to feel, oh, that, that needs filled there or whatever, or that's a bad spot. And, and again, I don't get too real fussy. I mean, I, I do, but I, I try to just back off, say, man, you know, I could spend hours and more hours on this, but it, again, it's, it's just, it's not a bike, you know, it's not gonna be in a bike show or everything, but I still try to take that much care and pride in it, but I always gotta remember, it's like, hey man, this is abstract work. It's just, you know, it's it's not in a competition or whatever, so. Start messing around my airbrush with uh, circles and stuff because I still can, I can still tone and tint and tone or whatever with airbrush. It's doing that fine detail work that I can't do, but I can still highlight or do these things and run it. So I was like, well, I'll see if I can still do at least a circle, make it look three dimensional, you mm -hmm. know, like the eyes on the piece up there. And all I need is people to come over and help me, you know, lay, lay a stencil in or move a stencil around sometimes. Um, and sometimes I just do it myself and it is what it is, you know, but I still have that perfect in me where I'm like, Ugh, you know, I want it perfect. But now, you know, I make a mistake. It used to, you know, really, really upset me because I was trying to be so perfect, you know, especially when you photorealism. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like, it's funny when I make a mistake, it actually turns into something better and it works out. People are still appreciating your work, you know not just because you're blind or going blind, you know, just the, they really appreciate the work. When it first started, I had no hope, you know, it was real, I went through a pretty hard depression kind of and just didn't care anymore and just didn't even go in my art room or nothing for like almost two years, three years almost. And uh, so I, I, when I started going to the genetic labs and, the, and the, the stem cell stuff's really going along, they're working with hogs right now, they're actually probably, FDA is probably about ready to approve it because they wanted to see six more weeks and Sean said it looks like it's probably going to be okay, you know, they're going to pass it or whatever. 
but it's now, you know, I'm looking at, man, there's maybe some hope by the time I'm 50 or, you know, early 50s that maybe they might find something or is not. But the likeliness of my lifetime, maybe not, but, you know, at least you have some hope.